I'm Steve Schmidt, your presenter. I have 25 years experience in retail and a graduate of the University of Colorado. I have 10 years of bicycle retail experience and I've had lots of inventory. So consequently, I love to take inventory. This is best practices for managing inventory and cycle counts, managing your people. Please take out your workbooks, write your name on top so you don't lose it. And so if it gets misplaced or whatever, you'll still know it's yours in the group here. Our section agenda for today on this particular session, section, pardon me, theft and shrinkage issues, gaining support, inventory can be a drag. Picking team leaders, training for inventory day, concentration issues, and gaining commitment. And lastly, choosing the cycle counters themselves. How do you view inventory? Is it just stuff? Or is it cash? How about your staff? All too often, inventory is seen as an annoyance. You've got to move it, count it, stack it. But actually, it's cash. It's what's owned by your business. Shrinkage cost. Let's talk about that. Dollars of sales to make up the losses. Here's a little chart that shows you there's missing or lost inventory, say $1 or $5,000. Gross profit margin of 30%. Okay, let's go forward. If you have a loss of $1 of inventory or $5,000, the cost in sales to replace that at a 30% gross margin is $3.33. However, if you have a net profit, which is really what counts, the bottom line at the end of the year, it costs $20 to replace that $1 of shrunk inventory or lost inventory or lost assets. $5,000, obviously you can see the implication, $5,000 if lost inventory at net profit of 5% could mean $100,000 in sales needed to make that up. Shrinkage can reduce bonuses, benefits, and company strength. 33% of business failures are due to shrinkage. 95% of companies have theft problems. Let's hope you do not. Let's talk about theft prevention, a very important part of inventory control. Protection of inventory is everyone's duty. You need to let everybody know that they need to protect the inventory, and if they're knowledgeable of somebody who's not doing it, they have a duty to report that. You set the example. You educate your staff about the threat. The prior chart's a good way of illustrating it in dollars and cents. Offer rewards for verifiable incidents. Control access and monitor your inventory. Reduce opportunities for theft. Thieves always take a, excuse me, stock a talking head here. Thieves will always look for an opportunity to take advantage. Don't create those windows of opportunity. Ask for staffs, the staff for prevention. How to prevent theft. They may see something you don't, and I'm sure they'd be glad to help you plug the holes. Get HR involved. Do background checks before you hire people. You may want to do periodic background checks of people that work for you, that work around inventory. You may want to send people on vacation once in a while and see what's going on. Hate to sound cynical, but it happens. You saw the prior uh, note. It says 95% of companies do suffer some sort of internal theft. It wasn't anything big. Okay? Nip it in the bud. Toilet paper. I had an incident about 15 years ago in a business that I owned. I'm watching one of my employees leave at the end of the day, and he's got about six rolls of company toilet paper under his arm. He says, goodbye, see ya. I said, hmm, that's a weird situation. Started doing a little checking around and find out. I think people help themselves to pens, toilet paper, and other things that are still company property. If you don't take that serious, they won't take anything else serious. So what we did is we took, got a case of toilet paper, had a meeting with our staff, put a ribbon on each roll, and gave one, and said, here's your free roll. Any more roles taken after that is considered theft and will be dealt with accordingly. Let the staff know the consequences of even small takings. You have to have a zero tolerance for any kind of theft. Let the staff know they are liable if they have knowledge of theft. If you have knowledge of crime or any kind of 
uh, violation of the law, you have an obligation or duty to report it to public officials if it's a public situation or in your business, your employees have an obligation to report to you what's happening. Or they can be held responsible. Gaining support. Educate the importance of accurate inventories. Have, a, have very clear procedures. People need to know what's expected of them. Everyone knows their role. Establish accountability. Encourage input. Recognize individual effort. People do a great job, need to be recognized, so that others will try even harder to get that recognition. Show respect always to your staff when you take an inventory. If there's mistakes made, work with people to help them get on the right track. Acknowledge achievement formally. If you get a super achiever, somebody doing a great job during your inventory cycle, recognize that individual. Here's a certificate of achievement awarded to this particular person by this particular business for some special duty they did. But it's a simple thing to do. Or you can get some, uh, today you can create something like this very easily. Give them a gift card or gift certificate and say thank you for a job well done. You build a team. Okay? You need commitment as a manager when you're building your team. You need commitment to, to team success. You need open and honest communication so people can tell you what they think and you can tell them what they think. That's probably what you think of their performance. Vice versa, it goes both ways because if everybody's focused on the goal, then the team will win. And you've got to be accountable to the team for clear instructions, as we said er earlier, for uh, giving the right training and the right tools, the right conditions. Real recognition. I can live for two months on a good compliment said by a famous author, Mark Twain. Give real compliments. Don't give fake compliments. Give real compliments to people to do real things that really work in a real way for your business. Team leaders. You need positive team leaders because people love to gripe about inventory and they don't like it, but positive team leaders, leaders will overcome that. They're focused on the job. Communicative people. Empathetic, not sympathetic. Sympathetic says, oh, yeah, well, you don't want to be taking inventory. I understand. I don't be here, here either. It's empathetic says, I know it's a tough job. Guys, the company's counting on us to do the right job to protect their inventory, protect their asset, which is ultimately protects us. Make them inventory wise. What inventory is all about? It's not just stuff. It's dollars. Responsible. The price of greatness is responsibility, Winston Churchill. Now, what depends on what you call greatness, but somebody does a great inventory job was probably going to be a responsible person. Look for responsible people who are responsible team leaders. Training for inventory. Do a dry run. It's always good to practice before you roll out. Clearly understood procedures. People need to know, as I said earlier, what's expected of them and how they can Get it done quickly, accurately. Encourage the input from the staff. When you're doing that dry run, have them ask questions and offer suggestions to make sure that all the bugs are worked out. Prepare the premises. Inventory preparation is a big deal. On preparation day, everything should be put away where it should be as much as possible. Stores need to be clean and orderly, or when I say store, the facility needs to be clean and orderly and ready to go. Have all your inventory sheets, your proper tools, pens, inventory sheets, clipboards, whatever it takes to do this particular inventory. And be ready to deal with anomalies. There's always a piece of inventory can't be found, piece of inventory that are weird, you can't find them on the list. You had to take a person there responsible for dealing with the anomalies. Concentration and stress reduction. Okay, make sure everyone knows their job. It's a comfortable climate, but don't be doing inventory in July 4th in Central Texas in an unair conditioned building, okay? Just make sure people are comfortable. Reduce distractions. You know, not a lot of loud rock music and a lot of things going on, cutting up and going, focus on what we got to get done because if inventory goes wrong, people got to stay and do it over. So it's smarter to focus on the reducing the distractions. Okay. Emotional issues. Or is anyone FIGMO? Well, no issues remains. Does somebody on your team get married in a couple of days? Or somebody's ups upset about something? They've got a family situation. Those people you need to work with and say, are you okay? 
okay, because they can, people get distracted. Counting all this stuff can get kind of boring. You get distracted, you got errors. Anyone figma? Figma means forget it. I got my order. It's an old military thing. It means I'm leaving. If you got somebody retiring in three days or somebody's moving on or somebody's giving you notice or leaving in a week, don't use them. They're not the person to use because they, their commitment's gone. Make sure you have regular breaks with refreshments. You know, it's coffee, donuts, juice, whatever it is. Don't do like I did one time years ago. We decided that we were going to have some beer at lunchtime. Everybody fell asleep by the middle of the afternoon inventory session, and we had to redo it all. Cycle counters. Okay, these are full-time employees. Okay, because cycle counters are people to be working on inventory all the time. The prior uh, des descriptions are people to be taking those mass inventories you may do two, three times a year. Cycle counters are people to be taking inventory in consistent cycles. So it could be a shared job. It could be from accounting. It could be from another position. Authority to correct problems and make them accountable. So cycle counters are the people that you're going to use and all these consistent cycle counts, and we'll talk about cycle counting later in the day, but right now we're talking about just getting ready to go here, and make people kind of make sure other staff support them. The cycle counters need to be nominated for their skills, their commitment, give them authority to do what they need to do, and make sure the staff's there to support them to get the inventory done right. A quick recap. Theft and shrinkage issues are paramount. Everybody needs to know how to stop them. Everybody needs to know what the responsibility is, and everybody needs to know what's going to happen if they don't protect the inventory or, sadly, if someone steals. Gaining support. Inventory won't be a drag when you gain support and get everybody pumped up. Let's get her done and get her done right. Okay? Picking team leaders. Make sure you pick the people that can motivate other folks and that are responsible people. Training for inventory day. It never hurts to have a training. When you have that major inventory, you have that training. Cycle counters will be different situations. They'll be counting all the time. They may not be in this situation. These are for people on your mass inventories, getting ready and trained. Concentration issues, as I said before, you want to make sure it's a good climate, got good refreshments, people aren't tired, not hungover, no whiskey flu. And get their commitment. and choosing good cycle counters. By the way, I'm not going to be here all I mean, beyond today. I'll be here today and this afternoon. We're going to talk about some great stuff, and you're going to learn a bunch. But I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I'm not going to be here next week. You know, if you take a class in college, you know, you give it for a few weeks, and you're done, but then life goes on. You need support materials. So to supplement the workbook and to add to your knowledge base, and to build your professional library, and build, to also build, pardon me, build your professional resume, here's some recommended reading. First, the Leadership Challenge. It's $37.95, but there is a discount for purchases today. This will help you develop leaders and may help, help yourself become a better leader. Because leadership is what counts in business, it counts in sports, it counts in anything in life. It counts in being a parent. It's leadership. Okay? Life scripts. This is a great book for you because it's about scripts that you'll come across, you'll deal with how to get a raise, how to say no to a raise, how to discipline, how to work with other people, how to work with other uh, people to communicate. It's a great business book. It's called Life Scripts. It's basically a series of scripts covering many subjects. It helps you master those and be ready in, in those situations to improve your career. Supervisor Survival Kit. That's a whole series of books there in that kit. That's 6380. But the Supervisor Survival Kit is something that's a series of books that will help you in uh, becoming a supervisor, becoming a better supervisor, and being ready for the challenge. Here's a couple other publications that are more specific to the topic at hand. Inventory Record Accuracy, Unleashing the Power of Cycle Counting, and Inventory... Oop, that went too fast. Anyway, I've got the copies here. You can take a look at those. Buy today and get seminar pricing. And here's the copies that you can say thumb through them, and these are my copies. I've highlighted some important points for you. Let's take a break. Uh, you can, there's a restroom out in the hall, and there's a restaurant nearby. We're going to take 
uh, a noon break, and then we'll come back this afternoon and get really into the thick of it.